Good morning and uh, welcome everyone. Let's uh, go ahead and learn a little bit more about the supernatural and the keys to seeing the manifestation of the supernatural. We'll begin with a word of prayer. Uh, let me lead in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for this day and the opportunity to study your word. Father, as we uh, learn about the supernatural, we pray, God, that um, we will encounter the supernatural, Father God. And uh, Lord, let it become uh, very common in our lives, Father, and help us, Lord, help us to apply the keys and uh, Lord um, strengthen oh God each of these keys so so that father we may walk powerfully the way you want us to walk Lord yes Lord your word says as Jesus was so are we in this world Lord yes we are here to manifest the glory of God and let the glory of God be manifested through each of our lives in Jesus name we pray amen just that uh, everyone is doing well. And how are you finding the second year so far? Huh? Yes, someone said something. Yeah, quite fast. One month is already over. Hardly, uh, you know, three months left. Before you know it, yeah, that will also be done. Uh, in terms of the subjects, what about those who are online? OK, <laughs> a little tough. One of the students is saying, yeah, it, it will be a little bit more challenging compared to the first year. So we need more time studying uh, you know, our notes, plus researching. So that's another skill that uh, you would need to work on. Take time to read up and uh, read up. Plus, you can use the internet to do some research that will help you. Uh, thoroughly learn the subjects that have been given to us. Okay. Anyway, you, you'll all do well. All the best. Uh, let's go ahead. We talked about the invitation that we have to walk in the supernatural as people of God. And in the last class, we looked at the first key, which is understanding the realm of the spirit. Though the natural world lim may seem like the limit. There is a supernatural realm from where we can receive the power of God and receive the answers of God. So the supernatural realm is what one must um, see manifest in various situations. Like we, we saw last time uh, when Moses was standing in front of the Red Sea. The natural realm says there are no options. It's the end. But God, who is all powerful, with whom nothing is impossible. And according to the instructions of God, people were led. And they were now standing before the Red Sea. But God could do the impossible. And from where did that manifest? From the spiritual realm, right? From the spiritual realm. So in the same way, when it comes to our lives, as we're walking with the Lord and we come to you know different points, it may seem like the end or um, there are no solutions, there are no options. However, you know God, when we trust God, we are going to see him work and release a miracle. So just want to ask if everything is okay. Oh, yeah, you can, one of you can please connect it then. I'll, I'll put it. It's fine now. Okay. All right. So, um, yeah, so because God is in the picture, the supernatural is an option. And we've, we were saying that the supernatural must can and must override the natural, you know, in these circumstances. Normally, the law of the natural world applies. 
but at times when god's purposes needs to need to be accomplished we must trust god for the supernatural to override so that's when we expect god uh, for healings the natural says there is sickness but then the supernatural overrides it by the work of redemption that jesus has done on the cross we believe in the covenant and we receive of the healing from god uh, maybe there is some form of oppression in uh, a family or in relationships that's when we believe god we say okay this is not how it's supposed to be god you will bring peace to my home so from the spiritual we are taking and then we are seeing that override the natural reality there is a lack let's say um, but we are seeing god provide into that lack so the spiritual is overriding the natural so for us as believers every day must be like this there are many such situations that take place in our lives uh, and uh, we must believe god for the spiritual reality to become the greater reality we don't accept the earthly reality if it is opposing god's word right if everything's going normal everything's going the way god designed uh, the world to be you know he created everything he said yeah it is good it is good if it is going as per his design that's fine we don't want to see any kind of interference but whenever it is not you and i as believers have to enforce the spiritual over the natural so that's uh, the understanding that we had and we said that uh, there are certain laws of the spiritual world we will not be able to successfully see the spiritual manifest unless we understand those laws and you know we pointed out a couple of things we said things like uh, the law of faith the power of the word um prayer worship fasting there's something about these things that when we apply them in our lives we can see the spiritual manifesting now if we don't operate by these laws and we keep wondering why lord you've promised victory in your word but why is it that i'm not seeing it it's because we are not understanding the spiritual laws of faith according to your faith jesus said that when there is no faith nothing happened so as believers we may lose out because we are not learning and equipping ourselves with regard to the spiritual laws so one needs an understanding you know in psalm 103 verse 7 uh, it tells us how moses understood he understood the ways of the lord so he understood the the dynamics of how god works what is it that god would do based on knowing god and based on knowing how he works so the same thing is applicable for us when we can understand the ways of god how will god work in such circumstances then we go ahead we go by the leading of the holy spirit okay let's issue a word of command uh, over this sickness let's rebuke the sickness right so we understand the ways of the lord the laws how they work and we start to operate in them and then we see the manifestation we also uh, briefly said that there are the spiritual spiritual beings angels demons angels belonging to the kingdom of light and demons uh, the kingdom of darkness um, and um, these angels are sent by god to assist god's people we can we can believe god for them to be operational in our lives uh, how will they how will they be active by the word of god because the angels heed the word of god so as we speak god's word as we declare god's word that's when angels will work otherwise they will not work we cannot command them because god is the commander of the armies 
Right. So this much we've seen. We've kind of broadly looked at the fact that there are two worlds and we are part of both the worlds. And we need to know how um, the dynamics of these worlds works and how to receive from the spiritual world and see it manifest in the natural world. And today, let's look at the second key. First key was understanding the spiritual realm and understanding the laws, the principles of the spiritual realm and always knowing that the spiritual can override the natural. So we don't give up. Second, today, second key, the key of faith. It's a law again. It's a law of the spiritual world. God can work when there is faith. Let's see what Jesus told Martha when Lazarus was dead. John 11 verse 40. Could one of us read it aloud please? Eleven verse forty. Jesus said to her, Did I not say to you that if you would believe, you would still in the world? All right. So this again is one of those situations we we talked about how in our day-to-day -day lives we may encounter things that are not aligned to the purposes of God. Things like sickness, oppression, lack, uh, confusion, strife, opposition, hindrance, many things, many things. It's not aligned to uh, what God's purpose for us is. And in those situations, how to have the spiritual world manifest? It was a similar situation that you know Mary and Martha found themselves in. Uh, this was the death of their brother Lazarus, and uh, you know Jesus comes G at a time when the brother is dead for three days, and in verse thirty-nine, Jesus comes and he says, "Take away the stone." He looks at dead Lazarus, dead situation. He says, "Take away the stone." One of the sisters, Martha. The sister of him who was dead said to uh, Jesus, Lord, by this time there is a stench, for as he has been dead four days. So her hope and her faith seems quite dead also. The man is dead, that's, that's there. But more than that, faith is dead. So it's as if she's trying to tell Jesus, who is, the scriptures call him the prince of life. She's trying to counsel God and say, God, the man is dead. What can you do? I mean, this is out of hand. It's out of hand for us, but it's not out of hand for the prince of life himself. So that's why when Jesus said, Remove the stones, take away the stones. He knew what he was talking about. So when God gives a word, a promise to us in our lives, he knows how much he's capable of doing. But we may try to counsel God and say, God, but God, you know, how can it be? You're saying this and how can it be? We can present our arguments. It's too late or um, we don't have the resources, or uh, Lord, we don't have the equipping, we don't have the courage. We come with our analysis to God. But what did Jesus tell her? It's not like he was not aware. It's not like he's not aware right now about our situation also. But this is what he speaks to our hearts even today. John 11 verse 40. Diksha, can you read it again, please? Okay, uh, you can read it once more into the mic. Jesus said to her, Did I not say to you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? Amen. So Jesus is saying, He's not worried about 
the natural reality only one thing he says believe believe you have faith don't worry about all that if you believe you will see the glory of god the glory of god we've been saying it is who god is what he does so when god manifests himself his power his authority it reveals who god is to us isn't it that's what the glory of god is think about john chapter 2 the water turned into wine if you and i today the water turns into wine we'll be wow you know you record it and put it on youtube it goes viral because it's a wow how can this be it's showing the power of god what only god can do something supernatural happens it's a wow situation because it's revealing that god is mighty he's great everything is possible by him he's gracious he's loving he's kind the goodness of god the nature of god the power of god just now we saw it in that miracle or in what god actually did so what is jesus telling martha you and i need one key to see the manifestation of the glory and what is that key only believe faith faith if there is faith it's like there is an opening for god to do something if there is no faith it's closed can god do he can but he will not be able to because we are not letting him do anything if you believe you will see the glory of god what if we don't believe okay let's quickly look at another scripture now this is matthew 17 and verse 20 matthew 17 and verse 20 please so jesus said to them because of your unbelief for assuredly i say to you if you have faith as a mustard seed you will say to this mountain move from here to there and it will move and mm. nothing will be impossible for you very good this is a situation when the disciples tried to cast out a demon from a boy who was brought to them and they were not able to and they come and ask jesus jesus why why could we not cast out the demon so jesus starts that initial part because of your unbelief so mary to martha jesus is saying do you want to see the glory of god only believe meaning faith is the key faith is the open door then i can work in your life to the disciples he's saying you know why you didn't see the glory you know why you didn't see the demon you know being passed out because of your unbelief so when there is no faith if you don't believe you will not see the glory of god they could not see the glory of god that boy being delivered what was the problem lack of faith unbelief so here is the major hindrance major hindrance god can do god wants to but what is preventing him unbelief unbelief now that is what you and i must uproot from our hearts if you are walking in unbelief it says god can't do god can't do that's what unbelief says faith says god can do unbelief says god can't do now we're not asking us to believe random things believe according to the word of god right faith comes from the word of god so as per the promises of god believe hold on to the promises and we will see the manifestation of god's glory but when god is saying this is my promise this is my word this is who i am this is my power this is my glory unbelief says no god you can't do my analysis says lazarus is in the grave he's stinking jesus four days he's stinking so we are going more by our analysis 
than what the word says because of their unbelief they could not do and then jesus is again teaching them faith he's saying look if you have faith and if you speak to the mountain it will be uh, uprooted and cast into the sea again what do we need you and i we need faith the just shall live by faith every day you and i need faith for everything and that's how we have to train ourselves so if i want to see the supernatural manifest every single day have faith have faith in god build up that faith factor in our hearts and then we will receive no place for unbelief if there is unbelief doubt we are prooted and we've learned an entire course on faith isn't it uh, so faith is the key faith is the key through which we are going to see the manifestation of the supernatural if you all have any questions or even just points for discussion feel free uh, to make the class interactive to just interrupt uh, it's completely fine even for the online batch here so faith is what you and i need so we can ask ourselves um maybe it's a good exercise to do to when we are by ourselves ask the question do i have faith do am i believing that god will help me grow spiritually am i believing that god will lead me into fruitful ministry am i believing for favor of god in my life am i believing that god will give me the grace he will help me grow in the anointing there are many things that we can believe for we need to believe for am i believing that god will open the doors for me am i believing that um, uh, you know i will do what god has called me to do sometimes we are struggling these so sound like very simple questions but we are struggling we are like i'm not sure god you know you could do it for the other person but not me somewhere that's where our answer lies but we could pray and say lord help me lord to build my faith because faith is the key if you believe you will see the glory of if i believe i will see god at work in my present in my future giving me dreams for my ministry showing me favor opening doors uh, giving me opportunities seeing the grace of god help me grow you know uh, in the gifts that he has given many things we are going to see how we are journeying by faith okay so faith is the key day to day life we can ask ourselves the question where is my faith if i don't have then where to get the faith where does faith come from the word of god spend time spend time in god's word uh, and say lord help me come to that place of assurance of oh god where i believe i believe i will see the glory of god unusual doors will open for me god will give me the wisdom god will give me the strength god will give me the health that i need right and even when we minister to people again that's another place where we want to see the supernatural as i pray bondages will be broken healing will be released demons will flee we are doing it by faith we are not doing it without faith isn't it so faith is needed faith is needed but when there is unbelief we can't see the glory of god so that is something that we must uproot so we can close every door of unbelief maybe th they are our own words um because we saw in matthew 17 20 if you believe you will say to the mountain so our faith speaks what are we speaking maybe we can correct our words maybe we can um not listen to words of unbelief the content that we are spending time in many things ultimately working on our faith in such a way that faith is there faith is strong and it unlocks the glory of god in our lives amen so faith is the key that you and i need and as we talk about faith it also is connected to our desire 
So when we see this woman who came to Jesus for the deliverance of her daughter, the Syrophoenician woman, uh, initially Jesus said, no, you're outside the covenant, but she had great faith. And Jesus was impressed by her faith and said, you know what? Let it be done to you as you desire, as you desire. Look at that. There is this word desire. Desire is connected to our faith. So when we want to operate in the key of faith, the same exercise that I mentioned, let's reflect on, do I believe? And then also ask the question, do I desire? What do I desire? What am I believing God for? Do I desire that strongly? So it could be a desire to grow in the Lord. It can be a desire to grow in the word. It can be a desire to experience the powerful presence of God, to dwell in the presence of God. It can be a desire to minister, where we say God, uh, uh, church planting or uh, uh, pa some kind of a pastoral ministry, prophetic ministry, apostolic, whatever God has called each one of us to do. Maybe he's called us uh, to serve uh, and have mercy missions uh, and we say yes lord i desire to see the uplifting of the poor the undeserved i want to do something for those who don't have education i want to do so what are all these things desires it's connected to the promises of god over our life a call connected to the call of god over our lives where these are godly desires and we are saying god you can do it I know you can do it. I know you will do it. And I'm waiting for you to do it. So there is a desire. Look at that woman. She had strong desire. Jesus told her, you're not in the covenant. But still she said, Jesus, even the dogs eat the crumbs. Meaning, you have to give it to me, Jesus. You can. I know you can. Don't say no. So she's literally after him. Strong desire. So then we can ask ourselves the question, yeah, I have faith. How much am I desiring God to do this? It can be for us or if you're ministering for someone, someone's not well. Let's take that for uh, as an instance. How much are we desiring to see the word fulfilled for healing? Someone's sick. They have to be healed. Did we pray once and forget about it? Or are we saying, no, the word says, by the stripes of Jesus, we are healed. Jesus has already done the work. Then why is this person sick as a pastor, as a leader, as a minister? Constantly, we are praying. You know, We are equipping them with the word. Many things. We are doing all that we can. Because there is a desire. Lord, this person must see your glory. They must see your healing manifest in their lives. So there's a strong desire, even when we are ministering. Somebody is coming, you know, they're having addictions, they have all these issues, uh, they come newly to the church. We see some small breakthroughs in their lives. But we continue to desire, Lord, you work powerfully. One day you will raise them up uh, to serve you like this, like that. As a leader, as a, uh, as a minister of God, there is strong desire to see the things of God. Or, you know, church growth, strong desire. And maybe it's a struggle. You're like, oh, how is it going to happen, Jesus? Don't worry. You say, no, Lord, you will do it for me. I know it's happening. It's coming. You know how um, uh, Elijah said, I can hear the sound of the rain. So there's a sense of expectation. Nothing is there right now, no rain. But I can hear the sound of the rain. That's what faith says. When there is no rain. God said it's going to rain. I can hear the sound of the rain. I'm excited already. You know, that's the way to hold on to faith and minister. There's a, there is a desire. I'm going to see the rain. Okay, I'm going to see the answers, the breakthroughs in people's lives. As I pray, the anointing on my life will destroy the yoke of the enemy over their lives. This is what faith says. This is what my faith says. So that's the kind of faith as a minister of God. We carry that. As I speak the word of God, the truth is being imparted into their spirit. Breakthrough is coming. Freedom is coming. Healing is coming in the name of Jesus. So that's what our faith says.
so as we believe god for ourselves or for ministry this is how we are approaching there is faith and when there is faith we will see the glory of god amen so we talked about faith we talked about unbelief being a being a hindrance we also saw how desire must be connected we must strongly desire strongly i strongly desire spiritual growth i strongly desire the presence of god i strongly desire ministry i strongly desire breakthroughs in people's lives that's how faith is operational and as we are ministering we minister by faith uh, could someone read galatians 3 3 please are you so foolish after beginning with the spirit are you now trying to attain your goal by human effort yes so there is a rebuke to the galatians by paul um, who says that the work of the spirit right which they have received was by faith now they were moving towards you know circumcision and other things like works they were moving towards those things but having the point uh, here nkjv version says galatians 3 3 having begun in the spirit are you now being made perfect by the flesh so begun in the spirit is faith we started by faith we must not stop one must continue in faith so that is how we are going to see the glory of god if we switch to the flesh that is depending on our own strength and uh, you know uh, like the logic of i'm not saying uh, worldly wisdom knowledge is wrong we definitely need okay so uh, it's a good thing as we are logical practical all that is very important but in situations where we, we god has promised the supernatural and if we limit to the natural that's when there are issues yes uh, akil ha ha where okay which one galatians 3 3 okay so yeah galatians 3 3 where it says are you so foolish having begun in the spirit are you now being made perfect by the flesh so in this context we know that um, you know there was a different teaching going on and so the galatians galatians were now trying to attain their salvation uh, they were being taught about circumcision salvation through circumcision but paul was telling them no you got it by faith now why are you yes 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 so it's not by works it's by faith and then uh, it's just an encouragement from that point on to keep moving forward by faith like now don't suddenly switch to works that's the point okay is that uh, clear enough all right same thing in our faith journey also we we must have faith and we must continue ministering by faith at all times yeah okay so how does faith come we answered that question by saying faith comes from the word of god and in that situation what we must also do for ourselves as well as the people around us is to equip ourselves with the word equip the people with the word first corinthians 2 and verse 5 would anyone like to read it please that your faith should not be in the wisdom of men but in the power of god yes so we want people to have their faith in the power of god the manifestation of the power of god and we know the source ultimately is the word of god so now how do we build our faith how do we build the faith of the people around one of course is the study of god's word so personally uh, we can equip ourselves so i remember once uh, there was a demon or maybe demons to be cast out uh, and uh, so before going thankfully there was a time like we told the person can you come on this day to this place 
So there was enough time that we had. It was just reading passages from scripture about Jesus casting out demons. Why faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God, because that's what we have to do now. So let me get faith for deliverance. Now let's say, I, um, I remember one point uh, was ministering to a family who were not well, both the husband and wife. So I was listening to so many teachings about healing. I also um, studied pastor's notes from the book Healing and Deliverance about the foundation. Why do we believe in healing? Those foundational scriptures. And even as I was driving to their house, I was listening to a, a, a sermon on healing. Why? Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. So if that's the way we want to minister to someone else, or even in our own lives, faith will come from the word. So we better spend time in the word. That's where we're going to get our faith. We're not going to get it from anywhere else. That's something we do for ourselves. So always ensure that our faith tank is full. When we are personally living our lives and for ministry. There's no, there's no uh, two ways to that. Spending time in God's word. Keeping my faith level high from the word. That's one way. Second, second is, as we read here, you know, our faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. So whenever we see God manifest, remember those moments, remember those instances, encourage yourself with that. You and, and tell yourself, oh, remember, you believed God's word, you prayed, you prepared yourself, you ministered and it happened. God did the miracle. And the way he did it back then, he will do it again. So what, are, what am I doing? I'm just trying to build myself up with those uh, instances and you know those stories. My personal stories or the, the lives, testimonies of different people. These are all just simple ways that I'm sharing with us practically. Now, how to build up the faith of people around us? One, of course, is the word of God. So the best thing to do is teach the word, teach the word. Even right now, there is one uh, sister who's not keeping well. So what I do is I call her up and we take a scripture and I just share that scripture with her. It's very simple. Maybe the call is 10 minutes, 15 minutes. But I tell, I told her before itself, I'll call you 10 minutes, 15 minutes. I will share a scripture. I'll explain it. And we will pray. Is that OK for you? She said, yeah, sure. So regularly calling up and saying, this is what the word says. This is what Jesus has done for us. So building other people up by the word of God. Because faith comes by hearing. Now faith for healing is coming to that other person whom we are ministering to. And as faith arises, they will experience the glory of God. In the church context, we teach God's word. Isn't it? So generally, we teach the word about the cross, about the, uh, you know, different things. We, we teach about the power of God, the, the power of the spirit. And then at the end of the service, we pray. Okay, do you believe? Let's pray. So what just happened? We are building people's faith by preaching the powerful word of God. And then it's easier for people to receive because what is there now? Faith is there. Faith is there. So this is how we build our personal faith as well as the faith of others. So if we want people to receive, we need to work on their faith. Now, if we don't work on their faith and we're just saying, receive, 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 how will they receive? Isn't it? Yeah. So faith must be built up. And that's how we will receive or they will receive. There will be a desire. And we will ask the Lord and receive from the Lord. So teach people how to receive by faith. Uh, scriptures also tell us that you know we need faith, we need patience to receive from the Lord. Could someone read Hebrews 6 and verse 12? That you do not become sluggish, but imitate those who through faith and patience 
inherit the promises yes so we encourage people to have faith but we also teach them that along with faith we need another attitude or characteristic that must function which is patience patience because there are answers that we receive from the lord like that okay manifestations that happen like that but for various reasons not that god is you know holding back blessings but for various reasons there could be some answers to prayer or some breakthroughs some supernatural uh, manifestations that take some time so the people must be equipped or they they must be helped to have endurance with the lord yeah it will come don't worry keep praying keep believing keep holding on keep declaring keep walking with the lord so with faith and patience as the people live like that as we live like that we receive by faith okay faith and patience these go together faith and patience go together and that's what scripture tells us we can also teach people to walk by faith and we have the wonderful life example of our father of the faith abraham himself you know abraham's testimony of faith where we know he heard from the lord and it was a pretty challenging thing that god told him to do to believe him for uh, a promise of a son where he did not even have a son so where does the faith journey start where did it start for abraham where does it begin where do we start believing god yeah abraham or us okay yeah we are broken we are we are desperate okay fine from the word okay so in the case of abraham god gave him a promise that's where his faith started till that time i don't know whether he even thought that he could have a son but god said i will make you the father of many nations you will have many descendants so faith starts from the word in the same way in our lives it's not random but when god has spoken either the logos we have the bible with many promises based on those promises we can have faith in god there's also the rema word of god where god speaks and says no i'm going to do this for you yeah specific very specific rema word is inspired word of god prophetic prophetic words even that brings faith to our hearts and uh, we we know that okay god you're going to come through for us because that's the prophetic word of god okay uh, so like this it begins from that place of hearing god's word and for abraham that was true and then we see his journey you know he continues to believe god uh, and uh, when it is hard to believe against all odds he believes when his body is dead the scripture says against all odds he believes he gives thanks to god uh, and he strengthens himself like that by faith and by thanksgiving he strengthens himself he continues he carries hope before the lord and finally the supernatural happens Sarah's womb receives strength and then you have the son of the promise so that is the experience of the father of faith Abraham himself who lived by faith faith and patience once more just the way we read earlier because in the case of Abraham and this particular promise it took fairly long time we are not saying that every promise of god is going to take that long but there are certain certain things that uh, as we are believing god it may be that we have to make a journey a slightly long one 
uh, but even then we can strengthen ourselves by thanksgiving by uh, believing against all odds and surely you know the the lord will do the supernatural and things will work out okay so this is the way this is the way for us to experience the supernatural by holding on to faith this is a normal way now can god work sovereignly without faith the answer of course is yes there are times when people did not have faith and god did a miracle the man at the pool of bethsaida is a good example 30 uh, 38 years 39 years he was there paralyzed uh, and he was not even expecting god to do anything for him but jesus comes and he asks him hey why are you here and he says i'm still waiting for someone to uh, take me in when the angel moves the water so his faith is something else but jesus still heals him that is god working sovereignly the man at the gate beautiful he was only begging looking at peter and john god did a miracle lazarus is dead no faith where is the faith no faith man is dead his sister his family no faith martha is saying man is in the tomb lord how can this happen when there is no faith jesus is doing a miracle but these are exceptions sometimes sometimes even when there is no faith god will work but what is the norm or what is the general rule only when there is faith and which is why we must build our faith be strong in the faith and as we have faith in god the supernatural will manifest so this is a key to the manifestation of the supernatural any any thoughts questions um it is okay to uh, uh, for every sickness depend on medicine or doctor or okay. we should uh, believe huh. in god have believe faith in god. god yeah yeah many people have this doubt whether one can take medicines because we say god is a healer god is not against natural laws uh, komal as we've been saying normally the natural laws are operational so when we talk about medication or some other general rules for health it's part of the natural world so it's okay like see simple things like if one is fatigued and has fallen sick rest is the answer if one is not eating well then nutrition is the answer in the same way medicines come from where god has put uh, certain compounds in nature that man has learned to um, get it out and put it into something called as a medicine and that medicine brings healing so there's nothing wrong for me personally sometimes i am feeling that for every uh, stomach pain head pain neck pain we are uh, having medicine so we are not sometimes i am feeling that we are not allowing god to work in our life yeah 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 see i i see i understand where you're coming from uh, but also it shouldn't become like testing god so case by case uh, we can make this choice of if you if you personally feel then according to your faith uh, you you decide but it shouldn't be that we are testing god when there are options available you know like let's say we are drowning in the in the uh, ocean and uh, god throws a blue life jacket at us and we say no god only orange i'm not going to take it god is saying it's a life jacket come on take it you know so that is testing god healing can come in many ways so if it's coming through wisdom and natural means there is no harm in taking it but yes you see your conviction and if you're feeling like no god is saying you shouldn't then yeah that's up to you but don't test god that's the only thing yes uh, ma'am uh, first question is huh. did jesus feel uh, uh, sick any time and the second question is wow <laughs> uh, okay second question is uh, like uh, uh, i had somewhere huh. there are 39 roots of sickness Like okay disease and all uh, so is this true or not yeah so was jesus sick uh i this is my personal take okay i don't know scripture or verse but i feel he could have been because he was a man 
he felt hot he felt cold he was hungry he asked the fig tree you know he came looking for fruit so there could have been times when he felt weak and tired and uh, sick also but we know that he always knew how to overcome so he would have overcome that that's the answer to the first question a uh, second one is 39 roots see this has to do with uh, interpretation of the word we must not interpret it like that if there are you know at least two clear passages must be there uh, but i don't think there's there that it's there people say it because there were 39 stripes that jesus took for us so based on that people say there are 39 roots but that's only one passage no where is the other way in which you are going to prove that 39 something is there there's nothing ah there's no direct implication is what i feel also okay great all right so we are up the time is up but in the next class if we want to discuss a little bit more about faith we can do that uh, let's pray and close and i request uh, one of our students online or on campus to lead us please thank you so much lord for this amazing class lord we learn about supernatural we learn about faith lord increase our faith increase our wisdom and increase uh, the hunger and the desire for to do supernatural lord jesus we give you all glory and honor in jesus name we pray amen 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 thank you vimal thank you everyone god bless you have a good weekend